Yeah, so the thing is on Facebook, whoops, on, um, let's see if everything is in there. Yes, it is. Hello. So um, we are getting ready for our yoga session. It will start soon. And um, just while everyone is kind of logging on and coming on to the call, uh, if you are on Instagram, uh, I think that the, I can only record for an hour on Instagram, which means that at some point, it's towards the end of the session anyway, so um, when it kind of works, I will stop the live on Instagram and start it again. So you kind of have to go back in if you're on the Instagram live. Plus I have a feeling that that's how it works on Instagram, where on Facebook, basically you can just kind of stay. And if you are on Facebook, then uh, yeah, you just stay on that. So um, if you're here, you can just lie down in Shavasana if you're getting ready for the session. So you can rest in Shavasana, lying on your back. Um, if your back is uncomfortable, then you can go ahead and bend your knees so your feet are flat on the floor, knees pointing to the ceiling. So that is uh, one of the variations if you are on or if you are on your back and it's uncomfortable lying on your back, then go ahead and do that. But otherwise you can lie down just with your legs straight, feet a bit apart, let the thighs just roll out. Uh, traditionally Shavasana is with the palms by the side, a little bit away from the body, palms facing upwards. So if, uh, if that feels good for you, then go ahead and do that. But you can always simply rest your hands on your body if that feels more comfortable. So the main thing in our yoga practice is that you feel um, that you feel safe and uh, sometimes things are not comfortable <laughs> and that's okay. But you know when the discomfort is just kind of moving beyond what you're used to. And when the discomfort is uh, your body telling you that this doesn't feel safe and you have to modify, or even you know mentally, emotionally, uh, things can feel uncomfortable. So sometimes we say, oh, you have to close your eyes in meditation or in Shavasana, you have to close your eyes. But if in your experience that that feels unsafe, then of course you're not going to, to close your eyes. Um, so you find that edge of where you feel you have space to heal. But right now we are simply just meeting in Shavasana or resting on the mat. Uh, so either lying on your back, legs straight, or you can, if it's uncomfortable in your lower back, then you go ahead and you simply bend your knees Feet flat on the floor, knees pointing to the ceiling. And either just arms resting by the side or on your body. So for a few moments, just settling onto your mat and finding space on your mat. can embrace the sense of the floor holding you so you feel supported by the earth beneath you. Whereas we are in very uncertain times, having some kind of faith where you feel completely supported and you can feel or you feel restful, stable is really important. Again, just allow your body to be held by the earth beneath you. So lying
lying in Shavasana, just letting your body rest on the mat on the floor, feeling supported. And allow the body to start just to breathe, maybe even letting the breath slow down a bit. inhale become a little bit deeper and the exhale a little bit longer so finding that space of just letting your body slow down So making a transition, especially if you've been working from home and you're just finishing work, that this little moment in Shavasana before we start our asana or the rest of the session, allowing this transition, allowing this rest between whatever you've been doing through the day. Now your Shavasana is a transition to your yoga session, this time where you are nurturing and nourishing yourself. And again, when you are here, you can take that deep breath in and the long breath out. Again, just that deep inhale, just lying in Shavasana and deep exhale out. If you're just joining us again, you can just take a few moments in Shavasana finding space on the mat, on the floor, making the transition into your sacred practice of movement and breath and mindfulness. And so in a moment we will meet sitting. So when you are ready, you can just bring the knees to the chest, hugging them in. And then go ahead and roll to one side. So you are just resting on the side for a couple of breaths. We often say lie on your right side. And this is really to activate the left nostril. So that lunar energy that we will work with this evening. The lunar energy of cooling down, calming down, nurturing. And then when you're ready, you can press yourself to come all the way up to a comfortable seat. So pressing yourself up to come up to sitting. Uh, lovely. So finding a comfortable seat. So again, this is your practice. It's your body. So you can sit cross-legged. You can sit on a couple of cushions. I'm just going to move a little bit away so you can see my legs. Um, so you can sit cross-legged, but you could sit on a, on a, uh, a couple of cushions or yoga block. And once you're seated, you can bring your palms together in front of your heart in a prayer. If comfortable, close the eyes. And just bring the awareness to the center of your chest. So to your spiritual heart and your energetic heart. And as we had the full moon and this beautiful full moon we maybe you saw last night and it's rising again now. So this abundant glowing light which will light up the darkness. So we're 
that that abundance and the manifestation, the pinnacle of this glorious full moon, if you have anything you want to connect with, to highlight, to create, to manifest, this is the time. So that may be your, the prayer in your heart. And so together we can start just with a single OM, so we breathe in together, the exhale can be through the mouth, it can be with the sound of OM with me as well. So let's breathe in together. Oh. And then go ahead and open your eyes. So we will stay sitting. So I'm just going to look around here. I can see that you're on. So hello, everyone. So uh, I hope I am on my Facebook page rather than my Facebook uh, personal page which has happened before so if you're on Facebook and you're like and you're on your personal one then just write a note I don't know if I can see the notes I think so so um, technology so that's uh, always a challenge but um, we will stay seated just for a little while so we'll get into the hip so as you come into a cross-legged position let's start with the left leg um, crossing over the right and you find just a comfortable seat. You can sit again on cushions or blocks. There should never be pain in your knees. If you feel you're rounding the back like this, definitely sit on a couple of cushions or yoga blocks. So if this is a challenge, then cross at your ankles. If it's easy, then cross a little bit further in. So basically your heels are aligned with your knees. If this is super easy for you, take your left lower leg directly on top of your right. So your heel is over the knee and the knees over the heel. Again, you want to sit nice on your sitting bones. Bring your fingers behind you, almost like you could shift to the front of the sit bones. Lift with the heart, take a deep breath in, and a deep breath out. Deep breath all the way into the hips, and all the way out. Now we'll stay here for a few breaths. So if you can, then start to shift towards the front of your sitting bones. Maybe walk your fingertips in front of you. But keeping the fingertips on the floor, even if you're extending forward with your heart, press down through your seat. So if you notice your bum lifts up, press it back down, extend through the chest. You can walk further forward. You can bring your forearms to the floor. But you feel that space where you can still breathe, where you can still find length, where you can still open. So we are just moving, we haven't warmed up, so this should feel comfortable in your body. You might feel sensation in that left hip or thigh, which is absolutely fine. So just take a couple of breaths, feeling that openness in your hips, you're creating space. Lift all the way back up again. Then look what leg is on the top or front and then we'll shift around so that your right leg for most of us is in front. Cross at the ankles if this is a challenge or bring your feet closer towards your opposite knee. Or right leg comes on top of the left. So literally, this is sometimes called a fire lock pose because the legs are directly on top of each other. You are not in a lotus position. You are not in a cross-legged position. Literally, lower leg on top of lower leg. So again, take your fingertips behind you. Lift your chest. Find that openness in your heart, in your chest, in your hips. And again, as you just take a deep breath in, imagine you can breathe all the way into your hips. Side all the way out. Again, take that deep breath in. And side out. And maybe you stay here, or maybe again you shift forward. But you stay with wherever it feels right in your body. Good. Thank you, Juliet. So I'm just checking messages and I'm in the right space. Uh, 
Yeah. You'll join another time if you can't join now. It's on Facebook and Instagram, so you can join me another time. So, yeah. So this is a wonderful thing. I can still connect with you just a little bit, even if we're in the virtual space. This is yoga goes beyond body, the physical. So we can still connect in the virtual. So let's all slowly come out of this position. Just straighten your legs out in front of you, circle your ankles, and then we'll come onto the mat. Or oh, you don't need a mat, you can enjoy this practice just on the floor as well. But we'll meet on the hands and knees, so I might shift forward and backwards so you can see me better. But we will just meet on the hands and knees, spreading the fingers wide. Take your knees wide apart, you can bring the toes together. And you'll come into a child's pose. You can rest your chest towards the earth. You can rest the head on the floor. If you have your blocks or simply use fist, you can rest your head onto your block or fist. So that's how a child's pose or sometimes what Shivare uh, said in, in the practice with her. It's a wisdom pose. And as we are in these uncertain circumstances, finding our inner wisdom connecting to the earth beneath us and especially at these full moon times taking that space of just connecting with the earth getting grounded and supported enjoying that space to be and to breathe is so important so wisdom pulls our inner wisdom So when you're ready, stretch your arms out in front of you, spread your fingers out. You'll come into a downward dog, lifting your hips high, stretch your hips back. You can have your knees bent, you can have your knees soft. So again, you check in what feels perfect in your body today, what works for you at this moment. So really find that lengthening through the spine as you press your hands to the earth. This should feel grounding yet opening. So really having that stability at this time. So just come into a very gentle flow. So we'll shift forward into a plank pose and you're very welcome to bring the knees to the floor and then slowly lower all the way down to the ground. Stretch the toes back, inhale to a small cobra pose to lift your heart, tailbone drawing to the earth and then downward facing dog or a child's pose. So let's enjoy that one more time. Come forward into your plank pose. Slowly lower down, maybe the knees are on the ground. Inhale to a back bend, lift your heart. Downward facing dog. Beautiful. So let's walk the feet forward into a standing forward bend to the front part of the mat. Have your feet either hip distance or together, outer edges of the feet are parallel. Inhale, just lengthen through the spine and then fold it all the way. Inhale to come halfway up and then bring the hands to the hips, straightening the back. Again, you can bend the knees to rise all the way to standing. Bring your palms together in front of your heart and take a breath. So we are standing grounded, feet pressing to the earth. I'm taking off some of my layers. And so we will just make a couple of rounds of the lunar salutation. So uh, Chandra Namaskar. So let's inhale, extend the prayer towards the sky, towards the full moon, bringing that energy all the way down to the middle of the head, to the heart, to our lower abdomen, down to the earth. From here, step the left leg back, bring the knee to the floor, lift the chest, and then extend your arms, lifting your heart, almost like the crescent moon. So heart extends, arm extends. There can be a little bit lift through the lower abdomen to support. Bring the hands to the earth, downward facing dog, hips are high. So as we come down to the floor, it will be that um, Chandra Namaskar variation where you bring the knees to the floor and your chest moves between your palms. 
So you stick your bum up, your heart extends to the, to the earth, chin to the floor. Then you can slide forward into your cobra pose, the upper dog, downward facing dog. Beautiful. And from here, let's set the left foot forward again. Bring the right knee to the ground. Lift your heart. Find that stability through the roots. Maybe arms to the sky. Coming into that crescent. You can embrace the openness. So you can come into a deeper back bend, but always have a bit of support. Bring the hands to the ground. Step the right foot between the hands. And we'll come all the way to standing so your hands can be in a prayer rising all the way up to the sky and hands to the heart wonderful so that was half a round inhale reach up exhale hands all the way down towards the earth take your right leg back knee to the earth lift your heart extend through your arms so as if you are reaching through your fingers, that connection from your heart through your arms to the sky. Bring the hands to the earth. Downward facing dog. From here, bring the knees to the earth. The heart between your hands, the chin to the ground. Slide forward into your cobra pose, the upward dog. Downward facing dog. Step the right foot forward, left knee to the ground, lift through the chest, crescent pose. So again, just finding your support. So if you have that hypermobility in your hips or your lumbar spine, just feel support. So feel that element of the earth, the structure and stability of the earth. Especially at the full moon where everything can be a little bit crazy. So feeling the support, but then opening up to the abundance, the glory of the moon. Hands towards the ground. Left foot comes forward, standing forward then. Inhale, reach all the way up to standing. Hands to the center of the heart. So we'll come into Hasta Mudra, palms facing up to the sky. Hasta is the hands. And the hands receiving the wisdom of the full moon. So again, that lightness whatever the light wants to highlight in our life at this time in our life. So we take that medicine. Sometimes medicine doesn't taste very good. So, uh, but we take it, we know it gets better. So with an open heart, take your fingers all the way out to the side, all the way to your sacrum so that flat bone at the base of the towards the base of the spine lift through the heart and again find that stability grounding down through the tail and then rising up standing forward bend we'll come into that chandra namaskar again so left leg back knee to the floor lift your heart extend through your arms hands towards the floor downward facing dog from your downward dog, knees, chest and chin to the ground. Inhale to your back bend. And on the exhale, downward dog, that stability of that familiar pose. Like a mountain, stable and strong. Left foot comes forward, right knee to the ground. Lift your heart, extend through your arms. Hands towards the ground, standing forward and right foot comes forward. Inhale, reach your arms all the way towards the sky and hands to the heart. Again, bring your hands out in front, receiving the wisdom of the moon, whatever lessons that we are receiving. Not just about the moon, but this time lots of lessons to learn. So your arms all the way out, open across the collarbones, hands to the sacrum. Maybe you stay here, just lifting for your heart, tailbone grounded. Maybe you enjoy a deeper back bend. Fold it forward, standing forward, bend. Inhale, and we'll just exhale here. <laughs> we'll come into that Chandra Namaskar with the right leg. So right leg steps back, knee to the floor. Lift your heart, arms to the sky. And from here, downward facing dog, hands to the ground, hips lift. Knees, chest and chin to the ground. 
Inhale to a back bend and downward facing dog. We'll take that right foot forward, left knee to the ground, heart lifts, arms to the sky, enjoying the back bend, that openness. I think especially today, sunshine is such a beautiful light on the ocean today, so very magical. So opening up to it, hands to the floor, left foot comes forward, inhale, rise all the way up, and hands to the heart. Beautiful. So we'll just take a moment, just wait one hand to the heart, one hand to the lower belly. So finding again that stability through your heart, through your lower belly. Finding structure and support. So I'm just saying hello. I'm not saying, well, I'm saying hello to everyone else who's joining us a little bit late. You just enjoy, jump in um, and take a few breaths you're a bit late but the session is how obviously they stay on Facebook and YouTube so staying in Tadasana we'll take the feet a little bit closer they can touch if comfortable they'll come into balance pose to three pose Vagasana so for those of you who want support come to the wall so you have a bit of support so from here let's bring the left knee towards us Rotate the knee out to the side so the foot can touch to the inside of the right leg, either underneath the knee joint or above. Bring the hands to the hips. So if you find your hip points, notice if one is further forward than the other or further up than the other. And then you find the stability. You can stay here. You can choose to extend your arms above the head. Wonderful. So feel the support of the feet pressing. So the standing leg pressing into the earth. That thigh is pressing into the opposite foot that's pressing into the inner thigh. So you're still hugging into your center. And if you come out, you might wobble, you might come in and out of the pose. Then we practice compassion. And we practice patience. Bring the knee forward and place the foot to the ground. And so again, just take a few moments, just feeling both feet on the earth. And this is mountain pose, so you can imagine that stability of the mountain, that firm, big foundation, and then it peaks. So imagine a sense that support underneath you, that strong support, that stability, it's there, and then you can peak. Okay, ready for the other side? Yes. So when you're ready, step the feet together again. This is tree pose, so you can imagine the roots of your tree today, rooting down, so for most of us now, the left leg, rooting down through the left leg. And feeling again, you are literally grounding yourself with these roots. Take your hands to your hips, so again, find those hip points, they're stable and level. So the only thing that moves is the fiber on the femur in the hip socket. So you can bend the knee, rotate the leg out. You could even have your toes on the ground. So again, your three pose variation. And it's not a competition of bringing that leg as far out of that as possible. It's finding that center that even as you're moving and the wind is blowing and you know, the trees move with the wind. So how are your roots? How stable and connected are you to the earth beneath you? And 
I know those of you who come to my classes regularly when we actually meet in person, I do love this pose. <laughs> and I think I love it so much because there's so much poetry around it or visualization of, you know, sometimes we have this big old oak that's just so solid, so grounded, it stays there for thousands of years. And sometimes we are a new, new tree that's just about growing. We don't know if what's going to happen with it. It might feel really vulnerable. It might be a lot of wind and movement around us and we feel vulnerable. We might move around, we might fall, we might have to come up again. And I think that is the medicine of this pose Radhasana. So release your arms, bring your knee forward, place your feet together, bring the hands to the center of your heart, and once again we will flow. So pressing the feet to the ground, inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward, standing forward bend. Inhale, lengthen through the spine, so half forward bend, and then fold it all the way. We'll take the left leg back, right leg back, you are either in your plank pose or plank with the knees on the ground. Slowly lower halfway or all the way. Inhale, cobra pose or upward facing dog. And then downward facing dog. And so we will embrace that openness through the, the legs and the hips again. So you can step your feet together at the back of the mat. We'll extend the left leg behind us. And then step the foot between the hands, turn your right foot flat. We'll come into warrior two pose, so you face the side of your mat. Now your left knee stays bent, right leg super strong and straight. It's a bit like tree pose. Your right leg is in more of a neutral position, left thigh bone rotating out. Extend through the arms. And then this is your medicine, are you going to really feel this experience? Are you going to go deep? Are you going to take a longer step or have you been pushing yourself and you need that lunar energy of stepping back a little bit left forearm to the left thigh right arm beyond your ear extended side angle so we are embracing the openness of the hips today back to your warrior two, straighten the legs, turn your toes to the long side of the mat, so standing forward bend, we can interlock the fingers behind our back, or if you have a belt, you can, or not even a belt, you could have a pair of socks or something, hold on to the belt or whatever you have behind you, and fold forward into a standing forward bend. So again, it doesn't matter if your hands are close to your back or whether they are traveling beyond your head. Release your hands to your hips, come halfway up and rise all the way up. Wonderful. So to the other side, turn your right toes to the back of the mat, left toes in, warrior two pose, bending that right knee, left leg is super strong and straight. So just for a moment, we embrace that stability of the warrior pose. We embrace the structure, um, the stability in the uh, poses. So it is finding that balance between rigidity and support, fluidity and just being not grounded at all. So find a bit of support, then bring right forearm to the right thigh, left arm beyond your ear, extended side angle. Brilliant. So keeping that right thigh bone rotating out, so external rotation, 
left leg is actually quite neutral. And if you're a very solar energy and you're pushing yourself, you're feeling that irritation, that heat, that anger, then soften up a bit. But if you feel really flat and heavy, then maybe you need to fire it up. And that's the beauty of Hatha Yoga, that lunar, or the solar lunar energy, finding the balance between it. Let's bring both hands to the right foot, down the dog or a child's pose. So you're very welcome to enjoy a child's pose. You can stay in your down the dog or a child's pose, or you can come forward into your plank pose. Lower down halfway or all the way. Inhale to a back bend. And we all meet in a downward facing dog. From your downward dog, let's just extend the right leg behind us. And step it all the way between the hands. Back foot flat. We are back in our warrior two pose. And you find again your connection to the earth. Straighten your leg. Again, fire rotating up. And you can swing your hips towards your left side, extend your right arm up. And we'll come into triangle pose. So right hand to your right shin, floor, thigh, block. Left arm to the sky. And here you breathe. Let's meet in a warrior two pose. Straighten your legs. Turn the left toes to the back of the mat or the front of the mat, right toes in. Just come into warrior two just to find that stability through your knee joints. Then straighten both legs. Extend your left arm up and hand to your thigh or shin, floor, right arm to the sky. And so again, you may notice the movement of the legs, almost like our tree pose. Right leg is neutral, hip, thigh, knees, toes in the same direction. And it's the left thigh bone rotating out. So no pain in your knee joints. then slowly come back to your warrior two pose. Bring the hands to the hips, straighten the legs, turn the toes in the same direction. And once again, we come into a wide legged forward bend. So you can simply shift again, thigh bones in the hip sockets are moving, the spine as long as possible. Hands can be on the floor, on your big toes, on your thighs. And you just take a moment, just allowing the hip to release down, finding that lengthening through the spine, and you breathe. So we say forward bends are um, grounding. So imagine that sense of just releasing any tension, anything you don't need, just allowing that to release. You can sigh out, you can yawn, you can make funny faces, release that tension in the jaw, shake it out a little bit, shake your head no or yes. And bring the hands to the hips and just come halfway up so we move it a straight back so you can bend your knees for support and rise all the way up. Step the feet together, just shake it out a little bit. And so I was just thinking, we, I like my balance poses, and another one of my favorite balance poses is half moon pose, Adha Chandrasana. And I know it's a full moon, um, but again, those of you who come to class with me know that I love this variation. So half moon pose, Adha Chandrasana, is 
pretty much like our triangle pose, so similar shape. Uh, for those of you who are new to it, or those of you who know you like a bit of support, if you have a yoga block, take a yoga block near your left foot, just in front of your left foot, or perhaps even a chair. Again, those of you who really work with um, and want extra support, you can do this leaning against the wall as well. So I know for some of you, leaning against the wall just gives that extra support. So even if it's a full moon, <laughs> we will just enjoy a bit of openness into Adho Chandrasana. So we'll start with the left leg, and I'm standing at the left leg today because it is the lunar energy, that more intuitive, soothing, nourishing energy. We'll come into almost like a small triangle pose, left thigh one rotating up. It's fine that the right hip comes in. It's a movement through the left thigh bone and the left thigh bone into the hip socket that determines how open your hips are. So you adjust where it feels good. Now bring your left hand either to your block or your chair, maybe a foot in front of your left toes. Step your right foot a little bit closer in. And then when you're ready, you might need to bend that front leg. You can start to extend your right leg away from you. It's the same leg variation as in your triangle pose. So both legs super strong. You can stretch through that right leg. It doesn't need to be high. It could literally just be parallel to the floor. It might not even be like that. So you can spread your toes. You can open through the chest, finding that lightness. And I know we say this is a half moon pose at the Chandrasana, but I sometimes think it's like, it's like a star in the sky, just weightless, just being in the middle of the space, cosmos, and just there for thousands of years. And you might be a shooting star, you might fall out of the pose and come back up again. But even a shooting star takes a long time, so we are patient. Let's come all the way back up. And release the legs, just shake it out a little bit. And then we enjoy on the other side. So if you'd like to use a block, take your block just in front of your right toes. Right toes, right thigh, knee pointing towards the end of the mat, left toes slightly in. And you can just come into your uh, little triangle pose just to get that shape. Both feet pressing down so nothing will really change from here, except we are balancing on that right leg. So bring your right hand forward, left leg extends, and again it's that external rotation. And so sometimes we come out and that's absolutely fine. But give yourself permission to find patience and maybe even that little pause. Of just being. You don't have to be in an advanced shape or variation. but you stay within wherever you are. So you can stay in this pose. I came out of the pose. <laughs> but you can stay in this pose for a few more breaths, extending through that left foot, grounding through the right leg, even feel the openness of the heart towards the sky. So feeling lightness, especially if you feel heavy, you know, this is a strange time, so if you, Feel that heaviness of being in the same space or, you know, whatever energy you feel, then for a moment just let that go and just open. The universe is so much bigger than what is happening this very moment. This moment, even the next, you know, the past few weeks or the next couple of months is, is a blink, not even a blink in the whole scheme of being, things. It's just a moment. 
and the world keeps moving. The moon, the sun, the earth, all still circulates and moves. So right now you can embody a beautiful star, the moon in its full or the half moon variation. Shift all the way back. Release your legs, maybe shake them out for a moment. Bring your palms together in front of your heart. And just take a pause. Just take a moment, just a pause. And just feel your feet beneath you, connected to the ground. And yet, this connection to the sky, to the stars, to the moon. And this breath, this moment, everything is just fine. Sometimes we need to pause and just breathe into that. Inhale, reach your prayer to the sky. Exhale, draw it all the way down through the center line, hands towards the earth. Inhale, lengthen the spine to come halfway up and then fold it again. We'll take the left leg back, right leg back into a plank pose. Again, straight legs on knees on the floor. You can lower halfway down or all the way. Inhale your back then, cobra pose or upward dog. Downward facing dog. Let's meet on the hands and knees. And from the hands and knees, we'll step the left foot between the hands. So again, I'm offering options. You can stay here with your fingertips on the floor. If you have yoga blocks or any other props to create space, you bring your hands on your blocks or props. This might even be you know, books or cushions. So we'll get a little bit more movement from the pelvis. So the pelvis can drop slightly down. But again, if you have pelvic pain or sacroiliac pain, you keep that sense of hugging thigh bones in. So there's stability. Also, if you're hypermobile or even if you're pregnant. And take a deep breath in. Then as you exhale, draw your hips back, that left toe can, or left toes can point up. And you just keep your hip over your right knee. Inhale, shifting forward, lifting your heart. Exhale, fold forward over that left leg. So just your own rhythm, you inhale, bending the knee, heart lifts. Exhale, drawing it all back. And so your movement might be much deeper or more open than this. Maybe there's just a tiny movement through the knees. So this is your body and your variation. Or you might even take a few extra breaths anywhere in this shape. like a wave. And so next time your left knee bends over the left foot, it stays there. 
we'll turn the right foot underneath us so we are almost into that um, almost like a warrior two pose but standing on the right knee rather than straightening the leg we'll come into a variation of the um, extended side angle so keeping that left thigh rotating out forearm on thigh or hands on your block or on the ground and then again if you notice your chest drops down then rise up again Your arm can be strong and extended, or it could just rest over your head. But what you want is to feel the openness, as if your heart could extend towards the sky, drinking in the nectar of the full moon. Come all the way back up. And this time we'll straighten that left leg, so find these toes pointing up. If that doesn't work, just turn your toes down, but we'll keep that if we can, the external rotation. Left hand to your thigh, right arm to the sky. You can stay here, or you simply slide that left hand down, your left leg. And again, opening the chest. And you breathe. your left knee forward again so we come into that warrior two variation let's bring the hands out in front so now you're on your hands and knees and we'll keep the knees underneath the hips so we'll walk the hands forward so maybe your head will rest on the floor or your heart rests on the floor and so again in this variation feel that connection to the earth through your heart And feel the waves of the breath. slowly come all the way back up and walk your hands to the other side step the left foot forward and then feel your heart lifting maybe your pelvis goes towards the earth inhale to lift with the heart maybe keep your hands or fingertips on the ground or on your block as you exhale that wave of turning in inhale to shift forward your heart lifts and exhale, hugging in. So just your own rhythm, really honoring your own flow, however you're feeling in your body and your energy today. Next time your right knee bends forward over your heel, you will stay there. Turn the left foot in, and we are back into that um, kind of warrior two variation. And then once you have the stability, right forearm to your thigh, left arm beyond your head, so as if extended side angle. And 
Maybe you put your hand on a block or on the floor. But really honor that openness to whatever is. So you are not pushing to come deeper into this hip opener. You are opening in your hip and in your heart. So you are perfect where you are. So the situation might be not be what you wish it to be or what you're used to. But wherever you is, wherever you are, whatever it is, it's okay. And wherever you are, you breathe and you stay open. You don't have to do, you can press the pause button and just breathe. Come back to that warrior two variation. And then we'll straighten out the right leg and we'll, if comfortable, keep that right thigh rotating out. Right hand to your thigh, left arm to the sky. You can stay here or again, you slide the hand down, heart extends to the sky. This is sometimes called gate pose. And uh, if it looks like a gate, maybe. But we'll keep it open. And whatever is we move through when this gate is open. Maybe we're walking through it right now, but um, it will be okay. And slowly shift all the way back up. Let's bend the knees to the floor, coming onto the hands and knees. So now your choice, you can come into a downward dog, you can come into a child's pose, you can just move on the hands and knees. If you're in a downward dog, if you want to do a vinyasa, you can do it once or twice. So from downward dog, you can move to a plank pose, just in your own time, coming towards the floor, into a back bend, downward dog. and repeat if you wish. So just take a few more moments just to let the body flow. And so as we continue this, those of you on Facebook, just stay enjoying this practice. If you're on Instagram, it will switch off in a minute and I will switch it off now and um, and you have to jump on again. So if you're on Facebook, just stay on your hands and knees down with dog, child's pose. If you are on Instagram, I will switch it off because it's switching off in a minute and switch it on straight away. So just taking this Sahadya moment and Sahadya is that spontaneous movement, spontaneous space of just being whatever we want to do. So we are still in that Sahadya space of downward dog, child's pose, our hands and knees, but we will meet sitting. Whoops, there we go. So let's see. I'm going to sit a little bit closer to you. So if you're back on an Instagram, we will be sitting. So from sitting, find a cross legged position again. And we are staying grounded and stable. So just finding cross legged position. And we are embracing that openness of the hips. So from sitting, you can take your left leg. You can hold your knee and your foot and just find movement through the legs. Your right leg can just be wherever you feel stable. So close to you, further away from you. You could sit on a block. You can cradle your left leg as well. 
So we think of the pelvis is related to the element of earth and water. And they're very important at this time to connect with the earth to be stable. But the moon energy connected to water. So living by the sea, this is such a beautiful thing to experience because the tides have been really low and absolutely stunning. So it changes with the moon. Now you can embrace this pose, just enjoy this movement. Or you can take your left arm underneath your left leg, fingertips to the floor, and then your right hand to the little toe side of your foot. So now you listen to your body again. You can hug that left foot towards you. Then you can start to extend the leg and maybe bring the knee back in again or extend the leg. So this is whatever variation works for your body today. And again, feel that openness through the chest. And you breathe. And you might just enjoy hugging the knee in, or sitting cross-legged. And then when you're ready, shifting all the way back and just take a moment and again you honor your body so I have had issues with my right hip so I'm gonna see how it moves right hip and right knee is feels sensitive to me at the last couple of days so this feels good in my body so this might be where I'm gonna stay but we'll play around and see how it feels And maybe for you, this is the variation that feels good. So again, this is your body. This is the movement in the hip socket, femur in the hip socket, not your knee joint. So really embrace your body. If you choose to do the other variation, take your leg over your right of arm or shoulder, left hand to the outside of your toes, and then again, you can start to straighten the leg, maybe hug it in, straightening the leg. And so one side very different from the other. So I'll keep my knee a bit soft here because this is a full moon. <laughs> And uh, sometimes we can push ourselves too hard, but I'm gonna nurture. And again, you know, that thing, some of you are saying, pressing the pause button, nothing is happening at the minute. It's a weird time. Um, so especially if you're working with injuries or recovering from anything, you know, we are in that space of healing. So you take time to heal and it's okay to just stop and just sit in meditation and your yoga practice at child's pose at any time in your yoga practice as well. And slowly release it all the way back down. Extend the legs out and you can circle the ankles. Allow that gentle movement to move up into your hips. So again, we can bring the knees towards us, give yourself a nice hug. Really give you a nice, nice hug. Because <laughs> we need that physical touch. I love touch. So give yourself a hug. If you don't have anyone to hug, hug a tree. Um, hug a dog that walks past you. So a bit of touch is important. So we'll keep our left arm hugging our knees. Take the right arm behind you and just come into a gentle twist. And 
in, come back into the center, hug yourself with your right arm, left arm behind you. face all the way forward again, again lifting through the chest. So we will open up into our front body for a short moment so we can maybe we'll come all the way to the floor so lie down with your knees bent, feet flat on the floor and then rolling down onto your back. So think of your feet, your knees and your hips being hip distance apart and feel a bit of support. We will come into a small, well, we'll come into a back bend three times. So we'll start in bridge pose, where you simply just, as if your tailbone could lift towards your knees, the pelvis will lift, spine into your front body, almost towards your heart. So all that support from our back, from our past, it's supporting us to open up and slowly roll all the way back down. We'll do that twice more. I will give the option to come into a full wheel, Danuasana, but only really do that if that's in your normal practice, if you just feel you need to have that burst of openness. Otherwise, we'll all start in bridge pose, lifting the hips. You don't have to come high, you could even have a block underneath, or a couple of cushions underneath the sacrum. If your heart is like, I need to do a deeper back bend, then you can bring your hands by your ears, come to the crown of the head, and you can rise up. But really only enjoy that if your heart is asking you. And slowly shifting all the way, oops, back down again. And again, this is a lunar practice, so enjoy this with that nourishing and nurturing intention. Opening up, lifting the hips, rising up. Breathe. And again, you can choose to come into that full Danuasana wheel. Deep breath in and just sigh it out, let it go. Another deep breath in and deep exhale out. And slowly again, releasing all the way out of that shape, hand to the lower belly, hand to the center of the chest, and breathe. So just stay here breathing for a couple of moments. So I think one of Instagram got on pause but we came back from our back bends. So just breathing, lying on your back, knees bent. Hug the knees to the chest. So right now you can, you can hold on to the back of your legs as well. So right now there's no pushing, there's no pulling. You just let your body rest into the shape without any effort. So again, that moment of pause, just being, no effort, just being.
And again, options. You can enjoy just resting here, maybe hands behind the thighs, knees to the chest, or you can take the knees apart as if you could bring your knees towards your armpit. Again, you can stay here, or from the inside of your legs, grab hold of your big toes and lift the heels from your sitting bones. Coming into happy baby pose. You don't have to be still. If it's nice to move around, you go ahead. But there's no effort again. You're just being rather than doing. So happy baby pose. You know, babies are not doing. They're just being, exploring. This is no effort. Whatever variation you enjoy. You're just marinating and breathing and enjoying this shape, whatever shape you're in. And then hugging the knees to your chest again. come into just a gentle spinal twist so you can bring your knees to your left side or right arm out to the right side again no effort you can close the eyes And then gently to the other side. Bringing the knees back into the center, bring the feet to the floor, we'll come into relaxation pose. So you can stay here with the knees bent, feet on the floor, you can extend your legs out, maybe palms to the sky, arms slightly away from the body, or you, you prefer hands onto your body. So stay in whatever variation you enjoy, I'm going to come up to sitting but staying in your re relaxation. And you can stay in your relaxation for however long that you prefer. But otherwise we'll just take a few moments of just enjoying Shavasana or relaxation pose. Just being, pressing the pause button. You can stay in your relaxation for as long as you like. 
You only been here for a few breaths. It's a really honored time for just being, allowing that sense of stopping because that is what the world is telling us to do, most of us. Um, and I obviously know that for some of you, you're not pressing stop. You are 24 seven doing other things and being busy. And then this is the moment where you press pause. Maybe it's just one breath where you can take with you on your night shift, or on your you know, 12 hour shift, or whatever you're doing, that you can take a moment where you can breathe. That pause between the in and the exhale, or between the exhale and the inhale. That moment might just be your shavasana, and allow that to be your pause. If you're ready to come out of Shavasana, again, you're very welcome to stay in relaxation. But if you are, just go ahead and stretch out, move around a little bit. Hug the knees to the chest. And so we will meet sitting. And coming to the end of the session, but obviously we can revisit this um, class at any time. And once you're seated, you can bring your hands to your heart. And just again, take a moment to bring the awareness to your heart, to your intentions, your dedications, your prayers in your heart. And offer gratitude for the time you've been able to take out. This is a nourishing healing practice. You know, let the full moon be nourishing like ghee. Ghee is nourishing, it's building, it's supporting us, it's rejuvenating. So allow the energy of the moon, of this practice, of your intention to also be rejuvenating, to be healing, to be nourishing. So let's conclude with Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. And Shanti is for peace. So breathing in. Oh, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So thank you so much for joining. And again, you can join again because on Facebook and YouTube, this will be up. It will be up for 24 hours on uh, Instagram and there are two videos on Instagram. Um, if you feel you want to donate or contribute or exchange for this session um, on Instagram, if you go to the profile and there's a, uh, my website yogaembodiedonline.com forward slash hello, there is a link to my PayPal. Uh, and I'll put the link on the Facebook as well, but it's on my website. So if you go to any of the online stuff on the website, there's a donate button as well. And um, yeah, that's gratefully accepted. So at this time when we practice in the virtual community rather than in the space together, physical space together. Uh, and if you have any thoughts, any wishes, any themes, or even just like an alignment short tutorial, um, anything like that, let me know. It's always a pleasure practicing with you, even if we're not in person, in a physical space. I imagine, or I feel, or I sense your energetic presence. So I'm sure that we can go beyond time and space in some capacity. And it's so wonderful to see some of you that I don't practice with often. I practiced with a few years ago and now you are in a completely different country, different continent. Um, so yeah, so thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Juliet. It's so lovely to practice with you again and again. You know, I know that you're doing your own variation, some of you, and this is, it's your body, it's your practice. I'm just facilitating a space where you can click in and 
practice with me. Uh, even if your practice might be an hour of shavasana, a meditation, a child's pose, then even more nourishing maybe. So namaste, thank you very much. And um, yeah, write a comment or share the video if you enjoyed it. So thank you. I'm here, if you have questions, you can type it in now because I'm here. So if, if we usually have a chat after class and you just want to say something, I'm here as well. Or write a, a comment or a private message is also fine, emails. I have a tendency not to have my phone on much, aside from checking in on social media and stuff, but um, phone messages seem to kind of disappear. Ah, oh, thank you, Caroline. That was great. Are you both on? Both you and Matt? So maybe this is good again for all of you that's difficult to find space with children and stuff, then uh, you can both do it even if you're not doing it at the same time. So, uh, yeah. So the perfect variation would be if I can see you as well, but uh, at the moment I'm just enjoying this medium because that's uh, simple. Oh, good. <laughs> that's okay. He can join next time. Or he can do this later on and you can look after Lara. So... We have to do baby yoga, not so much baby yoga, toddler, yeah, baby toddler yoga. So. Okay. <laughs> Hello to everyone. So thank you so much. I think there's a few messages coming up that I have to go in and look properly at uh, on the... Um, on the messages, DMs. So um, yeah, I will switch off, but I'll log in. So if you have any thoughts or any questions, I'll log in and have a look. And uh, enjoy the the beautiful sky. Go out and you know we sunbathe. We are going sunbathing, but we can also go moon bathing, and that's that nourishing, nurturing energy that building energy and I think we need that because a lot of us have been quite wired with whatever is going on around us so we need that build up so the full moon like ghee and I'm seeing my Ayurvedic doctor is also here was on and so I'm thinking about my ghee I'm gonna cook with my ghee and um, and use that as nourishment. Ghee is wonderful, I love ghee. So um, that's another nourishing practice which is probably very good at this time. So, uh, namaste, namaste.